Ezekiel chapter 31. Continue with Egypt. It came to pass in the eleventh year, in the third month, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to his multitude, be the Egyptians and everybody under him, whom art thou like in thy greatness. Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches. Now, when Jesus had a blind guy, the, the illustration was, he says, what do you see? He says, I see men as trees walking. And you will find in the Bible many illustrations, and you'll actually find in the life of a tree and man there are likenesses. Family trees, roots, branches, limbs, life, death, resurrection, fruit. And we're looking at a cedar in Lebanon, the Assyrian. We're looking at Pharaoh, king of Egypt, with fair branches, with a shadowing shroud. He's a healthy tree. And a high stature, he's an aged tree, and has excuse me, and his top was among the thick boughs. So tall, mighty, aged, flourishing tree. The waters made him great. Tree needs water. You won't find a tree in a desert where there's no water. The deep set him up on high. Now remember, we're, we're talking about a cedar, but we're talking about the Assyrian. Up on high. That's pride. That's proud. That's lofty. That's not God. With her rivers running round about his plants. A tree will produce other little trees. And sent out her little rivers unto all the trees of the field. Therefore his height was exalted above all the trees of the field, became big and mighty, and his boughs were multiplied, and his branches became long because of the multitude of water when he shot forth. So he's growing, stretching, all the fowls. Now get that with the parable of the sower. The sower is the word. When it likens the fowls as devils or as the devil. And Jesus spoke of, of a tree growing from a little seed and fowls lodging in the branches. Here you see it again. Nebuchadnezzar. You're going to see this over and over and over. Birds have no good regard in the Bible except for the dove. Read the unclean list about the great bald eagle being unclean. Like I said, the parable, the sower, the sower the word. The fowls were the devil or the devils. All the fowls of heaven made their nest in his bowels. So they are resting in this man. And under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young. This would be your mammals are resting in this tree. There's life in the tree. There's life under the tree, and there's life in the tree. And under his shadow dwell all great nations. This one man, the Assyrian, a type of Antichrist, who takes Israel into captivity. Everything and everyone is resting under this guy and through this guy. Thus was he fair. You're not going to find great nations 
resting in God. You're not going to find birds resting with God. Thus was he fair in his greatness, in the length of his branches, for his root was by great waters. Match that waters in Revelation, I believe it's 18, where that waters are people, multitude, tongues. The cedars. Now you go back to 28, verse 12. The cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. Who? The Assyrian? Was there an Assyrian in the garden of God? So we learn of another world leader such as the king of Tyrus, the prince of Tyrus, of Pharaoh, of the king of Assyria, who Satan is behind the work. The fir trees, so we learn that in the garden of God there were cedars. Their fir trees were not like his boughs. And the chestnut tree were not like his branches. Nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. Now what do you think of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was caught Eve's attention? By reading Ezekiel 31. If you were to Put your words in. It was taller. It was more bushier. It had more growth. It was more pleasant. Didn't she, wasn't one of the ones that somebody said was, was pleasant for the eyes to see? Its fruit was more to be desired, something like that, to be eaten? You might be possibly reading about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, whatever fruit it was. I don't think it was an apple. I've seen apple trees. They're, they're little kind of little dwarf kind of trees compared to all kind of trees. When you, when you look at an apple orchard, they're kind of creepy trees after you cut them. You ever see an apple orchard as, as, the, night's, as the night's coming on? This thing just look creepy. This thing's tall. It's healthy. It's, it's branching out. It's got waters. Did you read about waters in the garden? There's a river. Scripture with Scripture. I wonder if they were to have a game show and say, well, you know, does the, does the Bible speak about any other trees in the, in the Garden of Eden besides the tree of life and the tree of uh, knowledge, good and evil? No, it doesn't. Yay! You win $1,000. I don't think so. And I believe over in Judges or one of the kings it speaks about other trees. The fig tree. You know, the leaves that Adam and Eve took and made the apron. The vine tree. But let's read on. I had made him, whoever was in the garden of God, I had made him fair by the multitude of his branches. But God made him more pleasant to look on. Who's that? So that all the trees of Eden, not just the garden of God. Remember the Bible says that God planted a garden eastward in Edom. It's a garden of Eden because it was in Edom. That were in the garden of God envied him. There were there was envy going on in the garden and it did not involve man or woman. It was a fallen Lucifer fallen Satan with his devils were around in that garden. Adam and Eve have any envy? They didn't have any shame. Two after the fruit was eaten. What did Pilate say about the religious leaders in Jesus' time? He knew for envy. That's why they brought Jesus to him.
Envy is when somebody else is getting something that you think you should get better or more. Or they don't deserve it. I need it. It's mine. What was Adam getting? He had this, he had a garden of his own. He had a king of his own. A kingdom of his own. And he was getting all God's attention of his own. He was given a beautiful bride all to himself. And he had he lived, he was he lived forever at that point. Outside of Genesis chapter 3, he was he was going to live forever and according to Jesus in Matthew, I think it's 5, I could be wrong. Jesus said heaven and hell were I mean hell was made for Satan and his angels. I believe hell was made when Satan fell. I could be wrong about that. But there's one thing that is definitely known. Adam and Eve were not made and were not going to hell before Genesis 3. No man was. Any of their children were not going. So Satan would envy where they're going, what they're doing, how they were progressing, and where he would go. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast lifted up thyself in height. Pride. The only way Jesus Christ lifted himself up is when they nailed him to that cross. And he didn't do it. He allowed them to do it. You know how Satan lifted himself up? Let's see. He brought Jesus to a mountain. He brought him to the pinnacle of the temple. And what was the other place he brought him? The three places that Satan brought Jesus and two of them were to be brought up, to be on high. Isn't that interesting? Thyself in height, and he has shot up his top among the thick boughs. Growth. Hell has grown. And his heart, Ezekiel 28, is lifted up in his height. He's got a haughty, high heart that thinketh of himself and how great he is. I have therefore delivered him into the hand of the mighty one of the heathen. Now we're going back to the Syrian. Now we're going back to Pharaoh. No man can beat Satan. You, so you can't take a type all the way. They come up and say, well, there's a Gentile who's going to kill, kill Satan. No, you just can't take it all the way. Somebody's going to poke the eye out and kill the Antichrist. But he's going to be resurrected. He shall surely deal with him. I have driven him out for his wickedness. Isaiah 14. When you talk about Satan. As far as the Syrian Pharaoh, they're not going to be in their land we've been reading. And strangers. The terrible one, no, the terrible of the nations have cut him off. Matthew 13, 31. Daniel 4, 15, 13 to 16. And have left him going to be alone upon the mountains and in all the valleys his branches are falling this is Nebuchadnezzar as his fall when he became a beast for every like you say he was likened to a tree and they cut him down and all the valleys and branches are falling his boughs are broken by all the rivers of the land and all the people of the earth are gone down from his shadow and have left him. Isn't that great? Let me ask you a question. When they lifted Jesus Christ up on the cross, how many of his disciples were there with him? When you read about all the blind people that Jesus healed, gave sight, how many were there at the cross? All the people that he healed in his lifetime. How many were with him at the cross? All his family. How many were there at the cross?
One thing I know about people, when you are in your hardest time in your life, you're going to turn around and you know what? You're not going to see many people. You better get that down to, as a proven fact. I've had many Christian friends. I have many people I've walked with in churches. I have many people I've fellowshiped, family, friends, and all that. And they're gone. But I'll tell you the one that stays with you is the Lord. Upon his ruin shall all the fowls of the heaven remain. Oh, look at that. Keeps the devils. They don't leave you. And you know what you know what the devils will take that's better than you? According to what Jesus said. If the if the devils have a choice, oh I can't have the man, you know what he'll you know what the devils will take? They'll take swine. Devils will choose pork over man. And that's an unclean beast in the Bible. Here's a person that is, is, is dead, cut down, and they stay. There's a guy that's in the tombs, the graveyard, chained, tried to be chained, cut himself. Just, everybody's away from him. And the devils are still there, the legion. And who is the only one that walks up to him and takes care of him? The Lord Jesus Christ. And what do the people after that do with Jesus? Get out of here. You ruined the pork belly market. You broke into our revenue. The, the, the market has crashed. Get out of here. And there sat a guy clothed in his right mind. With the devil's gone. And all the beasts of the field shall be upon his branches. The branches are no longer attached. They're broken off. And then Jesus tells us in the Gospel of John, we are branches and we can be grafted back in to the true vine. As he speaks of Israel too. Israel is the true vine, but their branches are broken off. But yet they can be grafted in back into that vine. By the vine. And Jesus is described of as the branch. The branch is the one that holds the leaves. It holds the fruit. Branches are a very good study for a Christian life. You can't have a government branch here as a Syrian. It's going to break. You can't have a devilish or satanic branch. It's going to be ruined. Only the branch of the Lord Jesus Christ will succeed in the river of life. The Bible speaks about the tree of life is lining the water, the river in New Jerusalem. That's the only tree I live that, that I read about that ever survives. We're reading about a, a satanic tree here. Of Satan. We're reading about a tree here that was used in the temple. The very trees of the cedar of Lebanon was sought by Solomon to furnish the temple. And here it's likened to the Syrian, a type of Antichrist. The Antichrist is an imitation of everything that God has to offer. The very same trees that was used in the, in the temple is, is the used by Satan. It takes a lot of prayer. I, I think John or Peter says, try the spirits. It takes much prayer to, to see who is God and who is Satan. Go ask Job. Go ask David. To the end that none of all none of all the trees by the waters exalt themselves for their height. You know why God's going to break Satan down? So no one else will rise up again. 
How do you know that, that there will be a future in glory in eternity, that there will be no more rise of Satan by this passage here? They're going to look upon Satan lake of fire and say, nope, loser. Neither shoot up their top among the thick boughs. No one's going to rise themselves up again like Satan Lucifer did, Isaiah 14. No one's going to stand up and say, God, that's my spot. Never again in eternity. No one's ever going to fight for nations again. No one's going to raise a battle that's, that's my land. Never again. Neither their trees stand up in their height. All that drink water, for they are delivered unto death. Do you, ever, do you ever think about what God just told you about trees? Sounds like to me the trees out there in the forest are fighting each other. To get the water, to get the sunlight. It's not much life in a forest in the bottom because the trees block out all the sun. And yet trees grow taller and taller. Why? To get to their heights, to get to their light. Because they're healthy. To the neither parts of the earth. In the midst of the children of men, with them that go down to the pit. Thus saith the Lord God, in the day when he went down to the grave, I caused a mourning. I covered the deep for him. Genesis 1. We're not just talking about the Assyrian here. You think when this king is serious, you think he died, God, all right, stop all heaven and stuff like that. You really think so? I covered the deep for him, and I restrained the floods thereof, and the great waters were stayed. And I caused Lebanon to mourn for him, and all the trees of the field fainted for him. The great water stayed. Maybe they turned to ice. Genesis 1 1. Between 1 2. But there's a fall. We were just talking about the Garden of Eden. I made the nations to shake at the sound of his fall. All right, maybe they did for Assyrian. Okay. He was a mighty man, a mighty nation, a fearful. You know, they say the Assyrians were, were just brute beasts when it came to torture. When I cast him down to hell, oh, it's a Jehovah Witness. It says cast down to hell. I don't care what your Bible says. I got a note here, Shiloh. It ain't Shiloh, it's H-E-L-L. -L. Men curse by the right word. They tell you to go to hell. With them that descend into the pit. And all the trees of Eden. The choice and best of Lebanon. All that drink water shall be confront shall be comforted in the neither parts of the earth that's a wild verse there somebody went down to hell with a bunch of trees they're drinking water and they're in the middle of the earth somewhere did the garden garden of eden sink down and became paradise That paradise now in heaven with a river? Wouldn't, it be, wouldn't that be this torture for, for those in hell to look over and see, you know, the Eden and the garden and all that until Jesus died and rose from the grave? And that's what you could have had? They also went down into hell. Down into hell. With him. Him. 
unto them that be slain with the sword, and they that and they that were his armed armies, soldiers, that dwelt under his shadow in the midst of the heaven. Heathen, excuse me, heathen. The midst of the heathen. Well, who was dwelling under the shadow? It said the, the beast. Um, let me find it here real quick. It says in verse 9, All the fowls of heaven made their nest in the bough, and under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young, gave birth, and under his shadow dwelt all great nations. Nations that were under him. The beasts. There, there are three things with this tree. There are fowl, bird. There are mammals, and then maybe insects, stuff like that. The beasts of the field would be, you know, animals. And there are nations. You know what a lot of your gods are? They're, they're calves. The, the, the ram is worshipped among the satanics. <coughs> I already spoke about the birds. <coughs> Other than that, to whom art thou thus like in glory and in greatness among the trees of Eden? Yet shalt thou be brought down with the trees of Eden into the neither parts of the earth. You think there's a place in hell where there's a bunch of trees that burn up? It's got to be people, devils. Thou shalt be brought down with the trees of Eden into the neither parts of the earth. Thou shalt lie in the midst of the uncircumcised Gentiles with them that, with them that be slain by the sword. This is Pharaoh and all his multitude, saith the Lord God. What did we just read about? We read about Satan, devils, Pharaoh, and Egyptians, and everybody that's under him, nations, burning in hell. Can't be anything else. You say, well, who else is in besides the Egyptians? Nations. What nations? No nations. Everyone that would go into... Egypt and do business. And Egypt was a fair place to do business. It was a popular place. There was armies there. Remember when we, wrote, we read about Tyre and all the nations that were with him? I said the United Nations? You try to tell me they just stopped at Tyre and they didn't go down to Egypt? They probably took ships. They probably took caravans in Egypt. Egypt, like Tyre, is a United Nations of the nations known to these people at this period in time. Multiputes are in hell, according to Ezekiel 31. And it likens one as one big tree of all the other trees that happen to be in a particular garden, which Pharaoh, this is Pharaoh. Was Pharaoh in the garden of God? Absolutely not. Was Tyre, the king of Tyre, is in the garden of God? Chapter 28. Absolutely not. Was Peter Satan? Absolutely not. Scripture with Scripture tells you, again, the political movement that goes on from 588 B.C. and back and all the way to today. There are political figures today that God addresses Satan through them because they are working for by to for everything of Satan. 
Pharaoh being a God king. And when you worship a man as a God and he allows it as Pharaoh has done, as many rulers from Pharaoh all the way today have accepted the worship of people as whoever he may be, even if he proclaims to be God as a false prophet, God, God acknowledges that is satanic. And so I'll just speak to Satan through you. So what's one of the ways you can tell in a cult that Satan's behind it? When a man raises himself to be someone who he's not, desiring worship that is not meant for him to get, and stealing from God. And there's probably idolatry and imagery that follows it. what we learn from today's chapter. 